All right, I see a few people trickling in, and as always, this space is, is recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel in the coming days as well. So I guess we can begin. Thanks uh, all for joining the spaces. I'm Sam, I lead growth at Liquidy, and today we're joined by two Chads, two European Chads actually, <laughs> from, from both the Liquidy and Angle team who have joined us. Uh, we've got Dries, who's the DeFi strategist at Liquidy, and we've got a core contributor at Angle, Pablo, who has joined us. Thanks, guys, for joining. Thanks for having us, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's two uh, French uh, chats, uh, if I may. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Of course. course. French <laughs> DeFi is strong. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, just to give, give everyone an agenda of what we're going to discuss today, we'll just have a discussion on Angle, what it is, what it is uh, the the synchrony that we have at LUSD and Angle, you know, the fact that Angle has LUSD as collateral, the strategies that one could take, how AG Euro, the stable coin of Angle, can be used in the real world, and also just uh, general topics on, you know, what people are excited about in DeFi, and we'll have a Q&A at the end as well. Cool. So I guess we can start by Pablo, if you could tell us what Angle is. I mean, I think we have a, a, a decent idea of it, but if you could give, in your own words, a quick 101 of what Angle provides, what it is, that'd be a great start. Sure, sure. So Angle is um, like liquidity, a decentralized stablecoin protocol. Uh, the stablecoin of Angle is uh, AG Euro. It's a Euro stablecoin. Uh, the collateral mechanism and what makes uh, AG Euro stable is a bit different from liquidity. And the, the protocol has some um, notable changes like Angle is not um, like as immutable as uh, liquidity in the sense that new collateral assets can be added, uh, added along the way and there is an active governance uh, participating in the protocol. So AG Euro can be minted by different mechanisms. You can mint it from USD stable coins and then the protocol hedges itself against the USD Euro change risk by uh, issuing perpetual futures. There is a, a CDP like collateral uh, debt position model that allows you to borrow AG Euro against... <clears throat> like over collateralized deposit, just like you borrow LUSD against uh, ETH at a 110% minimum collateral ratio. Uh, and then the protocol is involved in what we call direct deposit modules um, that allow it to natively bootstrap liquidity for H0 in some places. So, so far the TVL in Angle is uh, like 50, around 50 million. AG Euro is the most widely used Euro stable coin. It's available on many different chains. Uh, and can be minted natively, not only on Ethereum, but also on Arbitrum, Polygon, uh, and uh, Optimism, and Avalanche as well. Um, and yeah, it's integrated uh, on Eurostable on, on many places. Uh, you can use this as a Euro source of yield. You can use this uh, as your on-ramp to DeFi uh, by keeping Euros. Uh, you can use this as a way to uh, short uh, the, the, the Euro, because by borrowing uh, 8 Euro against your LUSD, um, like it enables you to short the euro we'll come back on this later but yeah it offers many many different things and uh, we at Angle Labs um, uh, we are one of the team contributing to the protocol and we are pushing for uh, expanding the use cases around age euro and building a euro liquidity layer in DeFi through uh, Angle protocol That's very cool uh, Pablo just one quick question you guys have been around for just over a year or something like that, Even right? More how long have you got? Uh, we've been live since uh, November 2021. Uh, there has never okay. been any hack uh, on the protocol. And it's funny to say, like, we've had the same uh, grade. You know, there are several uh, independent reviewers and contributors which are reviewing the security practices of DeFi protocol, uh, notably DeFi Safety, which is one of one of those teams, and uh, Angle and Liquidity. Um, got uh, the same grades, uh, like 97%. So we, we've we been there for a little less than liquidity, uh, but, you know, trying to, to maintain high security standards and avoid being hacked uh, at all costs. Well, that's very impressive considering you guys are also on, what, five, six chains or so? I, I, as you said, Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism as well. Uh, one, qu one, one question I had, and this is from my own personal experience trying to use Angle. Uh, do you guys still have a minimum amount that you, you need to borrow? Uh, I believe at the time, 
uh, it was this was September, October last year. I tried doing that, and it was I think you had a ten thousand dollar, ten thousand euros or eighty euro, <laughs> a minimum. But I think that has been removed. Yes, correct? it has been no? removed. Uh, it has been removed. Um, it was from a governance proposal that was successfully voted by uh, uh, Engel token holders. Uh, now you can borrow any amount of AG euro uh, out of your LUSD, and before you had to borrow at least ten thousand AG euro on mainnet. Uh, now it's uh, you can borrow uh, like as little as 0.1 uh, LUSD from uh, from uh, AG euro from your LUSD as a collateral asset. Very cool, very cool, and I think that's a good segue to you know LUSD being collateral angle and you know strategies that oh, one could really can take. Can you hear me? I've got the weirdest bug where I'm not hearing Sam, but I'm hearing Pablo. Yes, I can hear you, Brice. I can hear you, Brice, as well. Okay, I'm just going to leave the space and come back because I'm not hearing Sam for some weird reason. Be right back. Okay. Yeah, no worries. So, yeah, I, I can touch on, uh, while Bruce uh, is away, I can touch on the, the, the strategies you can do with LUSD as a collateral for uh, AG Euro. Um, for sure. You know, like, n now it's possible to borrow uh, AG Euro against your LUSD, so you can put your LUSD and borrow AG Euro. The most interesting strategy you can do uh, out of that, and how do you take advantage of this? Um, you can put your LUSD, borrow AG Euro, swap your AG Euro for more LUSD, and hence uh, take advantage, uh, like get leverage on your LUSD uh, and long the dollar, short the euro uh, using angle and liquidity, which is for me a really cool use case. Um, it's super cheap because borrowing cost of AG Euro is 0.5%. And the UX for this is also uh, designed uh, to be smooth in the sense that um, in, it can be done in one transaction through uh, the Angle protocol, uh, one of the apps that is built on top of the Angle protocol at uh, app.angle.money. So it's yeah one of the use cases, like longing dollar, shorting the euro. But Bruce, I know you have uh, other use cases in mind involving uh, on-ramp and off-ramps uh, for LUSD. Uh, I'll let, you, I'll let yeah. you discuss this. Yeah, yeah, happy to. So on this front, we actually even have a, a really detailed article coming up in very shortly on, on the Liquidity blog that will cover everything cool you can do thanks to the many integrations we gathered this year in terms of uh, money markets uh, where LUSD is usable as collateral and borrowable. Uh, just to give the picture on this, we gained eight new integrations in 2022 including protocols like Angle, of course, but also Avi, Oil of Finance, and a few others. So it really broadened the scope of possibilities of what you can do with LUSD. Um, one of the things uh, I really love is essentially the fact that you can use LUSD as collateral on Angle opens many possibilities, but especially on two fronts. Uh, the first one, and that would have been a really good trade over the last year, not so much lately, is to short the euro. Um, and I know it doesn't sound so exciting, but you guys need to be aware that the volatility in Forex market actually exploded. So take any big Forex chart like Euro USD and look at the volatility over the previous years and the volatility over the last two years. It's insane how much more it's, it's moving against one another. Those used to be very stable markets. And you know, if you go in, in traditional finance, like five, 10 years ago, the guys that were trading those markets are trading them on like 100, 1,000 X leverage because a 0.1% move was a big day. But no, we've seen like days with insane spreads on the Forex. But then I'm not a traditional finance expert, but it's just, you know, the basic flow of you deposit LUSD collateral and angle, you borrow euro. And then essentially, as soon as you sell the euro to something else, you essentially short euro. Uh, so you could sell it to uh, a USD stable coin, uh, be it a USD or another, and just keep the position here. And now you have an unleveraged euro short. But since LUSD is usable as collateral on angle, you can loop the position where essentially you deposit LUSD, borrow AG euro, sell AG euro for more LUSD, redeposit it as collateral, borrow more AG euro, and achieve the lever leverage uh, that you think is the one you want. Um, and the cool thing is, you know, just over the last year, you had like spans of six months where you had 10 to 15% spread between euro and dollar. So if you write this leverage 5x, uh, it, 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 we get into pretty large uh, digits of returns. 
But of course, you are heavily exposed to the markets. So it's for people who really are anticipating a movement on those markets. But also, and this is more where, how I come to this strategy, um, for European users like me and Pablo, we find ourselves in a bit of a predicament because uh, most of us, I don't know about you, Pablo, I'll be curious to know, maybe you are more Euro-stable exposed because of anger. But at least for me, I, I've got some Euro-stables, but the bulk of my stables are dollar. But what I spend on the daily is Euro. So I need a kind of edge. And I really like to harness this anger strategy as a way to essentially hedge my USD stable bag. Uh, no, it's the same for me. Um, I, I, I have this predicament as well. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a tricky dilemma because uh, I'm actively involved in the, in the development of uh, Edge Euro. And so sometimes I'm using a USD stable coins uh, and I'm like, oh shit, I, I, I shouldn't be using those. Like the AG Euro product is really great, um, but we are not as integrated in DeFi as USDC is, for instance. So uh, sometimes there are cool farms in which I'm participating uh, with, uh, with USDC uh, and uh, I don't have the opportunity to do it in a zero. And really our goal for 2023 is to nullify the opportunity cost you have sometimes as for European holders and users um, to use USD stable coins versus Euro stable coins. You know, you shouldn't have to care. You shouldn't have to be in this situation. Uh, and since I face this uh, on a daily basis, you know, like I'm really committed to solving this. And, and I'm glad to, to, to be able to use that USD as a collateral. Like I can put my USD, you know, uh, and there are some new strategies which we're working on and potentially involving LUSD, you know, because there is LUSD is a thing, but then there are some yield bearing derivatives of LUSD, like uh, LUSD, the, the LP token of uh, the LUSD plus 3CRV curve pool, you know, staked on convex. Like we could uh, have this as a collateral, so making an interesting USD yield and then borrowing AG Euro against that to pay my expenses and so on and, uh, and like, yeah, pay for my daily, my daily expenses. Yeah, it's music to my hair. Good to hear that you're working on, on densifying the ecosystem for AG Euro because that's will really be helpful. Even though, let's be honest, there's still already opportunities, especially thanks to, I, I want to say, the growing family of Euro stablecoin. So um, it's right that right now we talked more about shorting Euro, aging dollar, stablecoins. But for those who simply would like to have, I, I want to say, a pure Euro exposure, because, you know, they are essentially... I don't know, for instance, looking to have a stable coin bag that will cover the living expense, uh, they will most likely prefer if the European spending euros to have that stable bag in euro, uh, you know, so they're not taking a, a foreign currency exchange risk on uh, essentially the, the, the living budget. So uh, for that, it's really cool. And, you know, it will be essentially opportunities of, of farming that are like with IG euro, G euro, uh, euro S and uh, euro T. Yeah. And you have few pools mixing them all together. So the best way to, there are different ways and we are working on, on them all to unleash uh, Euro yields in DeFi. The easiest uh, short-term way is to uh, have uh, AG Euro as a collateral on a big protocol like Aave, Euler or anything so that you can borrow uh, against your AG Euro. And how can, you can, how can you take advantage of this to get a Euro yield? You know, if you can lend AG Euro borrow ETH and then use the borrowed ETH to stake, uh, to stake them and lend staked ETH and loop against that, a bit like what Instadap is doing for USDC and DAI, then you can provide a risk-free euro, euro yield that is derived out of the staked ETH uh, staking yield. So it's a strategy we are working on. But then we are working on other uh, strategies which are involving more real-world asset kind of stuff um, so that people can still get a, a new euro yield in DeFi a non-Ponzi yield without involving any token incentives, uh, token in, uh, incentives of any form, and yeah, like um, it's uh, it's in the works, uh, and we hope to develop purists of yield, just like we hope that we will be able to provide new ways for uh, USD stable coins, uh, all USD stable coin holders, to make a yield thanks to what we are learning with uh, AG Euro, and yeah, this involves real world asset and so on. Yeah, so uh, one of the other strategies uh, I was actually mapping for the article, but I'm happy to share with you because I already have uh, even uh, an infographics walking you through it. And I really like it because it's mixing liquidity angle, 
but also another cool uh, Swiss-based project called Mont Pelerin. And essentially, the goal is to um, uh, finance a real-world purchase using your ETH. So this is obviously an ETH bull strategy. So you own ETH and you, um, you are uh, thinking that you are optimistic of an ETH future, essentially. And so the goal is to use your ETH as collateral. Uh, so, of course, on liquidity, where you borrow LUSD. And it's quite comfortable to have LUSD as your East layer, essentially, because, of course, the resilience, I think you guys know the drill, but at least, you know, you won't wake up a morning to a nasty surprise because of governance or other things like, I don't know, USDC blacklisted <laughs> the contract and now you are in a, 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 a tough predicament. <laughs> um, so that's quite reassuring. And also because of the initiation fee. So here we're looking to, um, to purchase a real world expense, a house. So I'm kind of picturing that you guys are not going to repay that loan over three months. You know, it's more likely over, well, just like a regular wall loan for house over several years. And so using liquidity where you only have an initiation fee, but no interest, it's like uber potent in that scenario. Uh, because if you compare to maker, for instance, liquidity for a five years loan, it's insane, the ratio of fee difference, like literally insane over a five years long. So to put it simply over five years long, you would have paid 20 times more fees to make a DAO that you would have to liquidity. And of course, this is a situation very favorable to liquidity because make a DAO charge a yearly interest rate when liquidity only charge an initiation fee. But I think it's also an, a very good showcase of what this initiation fee means and how cool it can be. So step one, is uh, borrow on, uh, so putting some ease on liquidity to borrow LUSD. And um, of course, step two would be then to uh, put the liquidity on uh, angle as collateral to then borrow AG euro. And uh, finally, the last step is to off ramp those AG euro using uh, Mont Pelerin. And uh, this flow is not only an ease pool flow, uh, it might also have, depending on your country, some benefits when it comes to the tax situation, but I am not advisor and this is not advice. I'm not competent to provide you advice on the matter. So please consult with the relevant person for your country because the framework is really different depending on the country. But this could have an interest because essentially what you're off ramping is debt. It's not profit, it's not, you know, so it could be, it could be out of value. So for those interested, I just tweeted the, uh, the infographics as a quote retweet of the space. So you could see the whole strategy in action, but you know, it's pretty straightforward. Once you have your two nested loans, uh, it's mostly a matter of monitoring uh, your liquidity position or being really safe or on the collateral initially. And then um, you're essentially fighting against your angle debt. I want to say this is the biggest priority to you because once again, the liquidity debt doesn't have interest rate, only initiation fees, but angle do have interest rate. Although they are very competitive, I got to give you that. The yeah, 5% yeah, yearly a, is crazy good. It's 0.5% It's yearly. crazy good. Uh, governance has the means to set it. Um, protocol also has the ability to set an initiation, an initiation fee uh, and also a repaying fee. So there are three different levels mm. on which the protocol can play. Uh, and essentially, I think the angle governance has been fairly um, uh, like um, open to any kind of model which uh, fav like fav favors a, a global AG or adoption. You know? So if we, we see, thanks to people like you, that uh, the protocol would be more used because of through an initiation fee rather than through an interest rate, um, then, uh, then, uh, like we, 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 it's something that can be switched, uh, and that's one cool aspect of having a, a protocol that is uh, not uh, immutable. Uh, that is immutable, even though there are advantages uh, to both models. And I'm not praising only for the um, uh, mutable model uh, because I really, really like mm -hmm. the fact that LUSD is fully immutable. But yeah, being able to adapt to market yeah. conditions is something which, you know, you, you need to be able to use it when, when you want to use it uh, as a community. Yeah, but to be honest, as I'd agree with you over short-term positions, but for long-term position, for me, there is, I can't say it as a way that a comfort and a confidence provided by 
borrowing against an immutable protocol where, you know, I open a loan on liquidity and I tend to keep it for the fi next five years. I know for certain that it's technically impossible for my loan terms to change over those five years. Yeah, no, that's cool. And <laughs> yeah, but of course, you know, on the other side, when you have uh, the code that can be changed, indeed, you have a more agile protocol that can react better to market condition. But yeah, in perspective of borrower, I do think immutability, especially for long-term position, has uh, need benefits. But yeah, just so to close the loop on this strategy, um, so yeah, again, uh, you are fighting against your angle that, but luckily for you, angle is one of the most competitive when it comes to interest rate right now. So you're not going to accrue this much interest rate, but it's still in your best interest to repay the angle debt as fast as possible yes. to avoid accruing too much. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the cool thing is uh, once you have cleared your angle debt, while well, the flow is quite straightforward, you can recoup your LUSD collateral, and then it's up to you. You can either repay your liquidity debt and recover the ease, or uh, you know maybe go for another purchase. Now that you have your reasonably sized main house, maybe you want to buy a reasonably sized country house, and so you can just reproduce the flow by reputting, uh, reborrowing AG Euro and financing another purchase, for instance. What I want to mention on um, on that uh, increasing for uh, AG Euro is that now it's possible, you know, to um, open positions and borrow against yield-bearing positions. So I mentioned potentially right now uh, it's only possible to do this with uh, Frax USDC uh, LP tokens on Curve, uh, like staked on Convex and staked DAO. Uh, but imagine you can use LUSD plus two CRV to borrow a euro. Like your token, well, assuming the USD value, it doesn't vary. Like uh, the USD value, uh, the USD doesn't vary with respect to the euro. If you're earning like two or three percent uh, with your collateral and your debt costs you like 0.5 percent, then in some way uh, your debt is uh, self repaying itself because the value of your collateral increases faster than the value of your debt. Um, and we are actively promoting this use case, you know, because it's really cool to, to have normal tokens uh, which are not making any revenue. But as long as, as, as soon as you are able to liquidate, um, like wrapped versions uh, of assets which are getting a yield. And as soon as you are able to mitigate the risk uh, through oracles, uh, through higher interest rates, potentially through lower collateral factors, the risk of having the underlying yield strategies depegging or losing money, and that, that it doesn't cause a threat to the protocol. Uh, well, it's a very, very powerful tool uh, to let people uh, borrow uh, your stablecoin uh, and take long-term loans uh, because they know that like with a high certainty, not for sure, but they will be making more out of their collateral than out of the debt and they will be able to use their AG or debt to do something else and do whatever they, will, they want in their daily lives. All right, Pablo, then when BLUSD collateral on Ingo? Because um, <laughs> that is making good yeah, deal. There is a hard requirement <laughs> of having a Chainlink feed, but uh, when it's supported on Chainlink, uh, I guess... Uh, I guess it, uh, we could uh, make this work out. Yeah, Chainlink are, are not exactly the, the quickest to move in the space, <laughs> but there is a, a different path for BLUSD. I guess we could talk it <laughs> offline. But I guess for the audience, it's interesting to where, uh, you know, because BLUSD is redeemable against LUSD, that is the uh, full price of BLUSD. So essentially, you could use this as your Oracle price because you know for a fact that the system guarantees you that you can at least get, I think right now it's 111 LUSD per BLUSD. So using that as your actual price source for BLUSD instead of the market price protects you against fluctuation. But yeah, happy to walk yeah. you through the floor no, offline yeah, yeah. if we, you're interested. We, we, <laughs> we need to study this. And uh, maybe David, I see that David from Chainlink is, is in the audience, uh, has uh, other ideas and potential insights of uh, when uh, it will be possible to have a, a feed for a BLUSD. Uh, but yeah, like it's risky to add a new collateral asset. Uh, and you know that to add a new collateral asset to a stable con protocol, it's even riskier to add a, uh, a yield bearing token, a, a LP token. And so you have to take like far more, like we, we have a checklist uh, in angle governance, which is really, really long when it comes to adding new assets. We don't want to take any risk. Um, and so of course, like if BLUSD or even the curve derivatives of BLUSD, like the LP tokens involving BLUSD 
uh, pass the cut, then uh, I guess uh, I'd be more than happy to, to start the work uh, to, to provide these opportunities to, uh, to Angle Protocol. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't know David was in the audience. Hi. By the way, David, if you're around, LUSD, Optimism, changing price speed. It's been six months. We have dozens of integrations waiting for it. I would really appreciate if you can drop a word to the Chainlink team. And one of them is actually LUSD as collateral on Optimism. A lot of exciting stuff uh, are, are pending this integration. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Angle, we would uh, probably use it, I guess. Yeah, Angle, Avi, pull together, Mimo, and I have two or three more that are waiting on this Oracle. <laughs> so, cool. yeah. That, that was very fruitful, guys. One one thing that I was very impressed by, Pablo, from, from Angle's side as well, is the, the amount of on-ramp, op, on-ramp, off-ramp uh, integrations that you guys seem to have. Uh, I guess, you know, Uh, could you speak to a little bit about this? So I guess you have like multiple places where you can buy AG Euro. That's the first thing. But then you also have a couple of integrations where, where oh, with, with, I guess, credit cards or debit cards where you can spend that, that particular AG Euro, correct? Uh, yes, yes, it's correct. Uh, these are kind of important integrations for us. Um, so w one of the most important integration, it's called a mover. Um, it's basically uh, a debit card where you can just, top up your LG Euro and then spend it, uh, spend, uh, like use your debit card to spend it uh, all over the world. Um, yeah, amazing. They have LUSD too. <laughs> um, I really like Mover. Yeah, cool. And we have Faizen as, as well, which is, uh, I think it's a Vietnamese company uh, and which allows you to pay uh, for goods and services with, uh, with LG Euro. And these are important partners. And maybe one cool thing as well, um, we can announce before we were just supported by Mont Pelerin. Um, like AG Euro uh, could only be off-ramped through Mont Pelerin and it will soon be integrated on Transac so you will be able to off-ramp your AG Euro through Transac uh, and we have one new on-ramp uh, as well which is on DeFi uh, which will also soon off-ramp uh, AG Euro so it's uh, like we were multiplicating the uh, amount of integrations and like you know that launching is um Launching a stablecoin is like launching a new standard and no one has incentives to use the standard unless other people use it. So th that's why the integration game is so, so important. And Brice, I know you've been really excellent at pushing for LUSD adoption in many places in DeFi. Um, in the Angle team, we have a Mariam uh, block adopter, which is, uh, which is part of the Angle team uh, and which is in the space, which is uh, really, really uh, fighting tooth and nail for integrating AG Euro and Angle protocol uh, on, on every chain. So it's crucial to have those efforts and we will never stop uh, doing those because it's our, uh, our reason for living, you know. Never stop grinding the governances. <laughs> Thanks for that, Pablo. Yeah, so I guess the next point before we open it up to questions and, and get a feeling from you guys as to what, what you're most excited about in DeFi in 2023 is, so what's, what's next for Angle? Like what's, uh, you know, you, you mentioned earlier uh, some, some new things that you guys are working on, yeah. but, you know, in the near horizon, let's say three to six months, what's, what's coming up? Uh, many things, man, many things. Um, no, so like I'll be sharing some alpha and stuff we haven't uh, announced publicly uh, publicly yet, even though we've been discussing it uh, with the people we are working with. We are working on a new uh, incentivization solution for Uniswap D3 liquidity. Uh, basically, the way uh, uh, AGO liquidity is incentivized on Uniswap, it is based on a system that will be generalized uh, so that any protocol that wants to deposit incentive on, on Uniswap It will just have to do one, one on-chain transaction and then rewards will be automatically distributed to all liquidity providers, even if these liquidity, these liquidity providers are providing their liquidity through Gamma, through Arrakis. So like, this is a big product for us and we believe it has the, the potential to position Angle as uh, the liquidity hub uh, for Uniswap V3. Uh, we hope uh, to have this live in around a month. Um, Like, I, I try not to be too optimistic, even though we've got uh, many, many of the things uh, which are ready. Um, then there is the, the big alpha, uh, a gold stable coin should be coming as well. Uh, you know, like, uh, the Angle protocol has 
everything that's needed uh, was built to be able to support multiple stable coins. And now we think it's a good time to venture into gold. So we will be posting a governance proposal to uh, ask uh, Angle Governance um, whether they support or not, they would support or not a gold stable coin. So this should come live by the end of the week, if not uh, early next week. And then the release of the gold stable coin should follow, uh, should, should like should be done in a month or two. Um, and then yeah, there is a, a a big stuff regarding reward asset infrastructure. Um, like uh, I, I won't I won't be sharing much more, but essentially we're thinking of ways uh, to integrate a GRO more with real world finance uh, sources of yield, real world finance products. Uh, and this echoes your question, Sam, about what excites me in DeFi uh, uh, in 2023. What excites me about the space is the still the opportunity to build a permissionless, composable, and open financial ecosystem that's more transparent uh, than the existing financial ecosystem with multiple intermediaries. Like, this is the reason why I'm the space, and this is the reason why I'm still here. But in 2023, I, th I think we are now starting to have all the tools needed to, needed to make this a reality. And so all the protocols that are bridging the gap, that are bringing new verticals, new primitives from centralized finance to uh, blockchains, uh, this is what excites me. So tokenization protocols uh, are number one. And then like everything that relates to uh, providing uh, the risk-free yield of the market in DeFi, is for me, um, yeah, what what, uh, what wakes me up at night uh, because I believe that if we don't have that, uh, I don't think that uh, we will have uh, a path for a DeFi to truly scale uh, over the next 10 years. Well, that's quite the packed roadmap. Um, you would definitely probably have interest with this Uniswap V3 incentivization solution. Uh, that was definitely, it's definitely a struggle. I was researching it the other day. And yeah, I kind of get why you're building it because I didn't find any easy solution. So I wanted to incentivize an LP over certain ticks and do it in a proper way that couldn't be gained. And uh, I couldn't find a quick, easy to implement solution that was essentially, you know, set your range, drop your rewards and we handle the rest. So if you deliver on that, you will have probably strong interest. Um, on my end, what excites me most for 2023 uh, I guess I'm going to be a bit of a more DeFi DJ than Pablo <laughs> instead of being focused on the real world. For me, I think it's really a question of um, reaching a state of maturity in how we structure liquidity in DeFi. So uh, a lot of the liquidity is still utterly unoptimized. Uh, many pools are still running a Uniswap V2 model. And I think this year is the year uh, it's probably going to change. Uh, I do have some alpha on this, but I cannot share too much. But um, one that I can probably share is, uh, you know, you think about how long ago Uniswap V3 was released. I am kind of anticipating a release on this from this year. And I also uh, I am anticipating several other releases when it comes to DEXs that I think are really going to reshuffle the cards. And of course, liquidity will be at the forefront of this card reshuffling uh, <laughs> because uh, liquidity strategy management is is a big topic for us. So this is what I would be looking uh, uh, most closely uh, for this year because I really think there's going to be uh, um, important changes in how we handle, manage, structure liquidity and projects that are able to understand that shift and harness it are going to be able to achieve 10x, 100x more efficient liquidity than projects that do not connect those dots. So the impact will be massive, that I am certain of. That's, uh, that's the narrative we want to push for uh, with our new Univ3 incentivization product. You know, we want to help everyone understand um, the fact that um, like they, they can really incentivize liquidity in the ranges they want. So have as little liquidity, provide uh, uh, as much volume as, uh, as possible. Uh, that's the point of the product we are launching. Uh, it maybe comes a bit late uh, because, yeah, maybe there will be new AMM models uh, developed by some prominent teams uh, in the space. Uh, and we, we know this for sure. But at least um, at Angle, we know uh, we are thinking a lot as well about how to position a GRO liquidity, how to take advantage of it, and then how to build the tools for everyone to take advantage of it. So we will try to 
you know, be part of this narrative uh, over the future uh, iterations of uh, decentralized exchanges. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much. That was very fruitful. I guess now would be good to open up uh, to the audience. Uh, if you have any questions, please just raise your hand and I'll bring you up to the stage and you can ask your question. We've got David. Perfect. Let me let me give you the chance to speak. There you go. You should have it now. Hey, Brees. Hey, hey, Pablo. Uh, I, I'm here just as a as a user of both the protocols. But uh, but since you did ask Brees about LUSD, uh, I can represent Chainlink for a little bit and just to, to let you know that the LUSD feed for Optimism uh, went live on our documentation this week. Amazing! Woohoo! Thanks, David. How comes we don't know about this? I've been chasing your teams for six months, and you're telling me shit for a week, and I don't know about it. Yes. I have. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just excited. <laughs> okay, I have like ten people. I go. I need to talk to now to let them move on the integrations. But such a cool news. Thanks, David. Okay. So I guess for the audience, it means expect a flurry of integrations coming up for liquidity on optimism, including something that has been a little dream of mine since I discovered liquidity, which is liquidity X pulled together. It's a no brainer. The funniest protocol of DeFi that is also one of the most resilient paired with the most resilient stable coin of DeFi means you get the most resilient fun lottery of the freaking world. So now we can walk towards that thanks to uh, getting AVI, LUSD on AVI optimism now that we have the, have the price feed. And as soon as we have that, the pull together community is really eager to integrate. So I, I will let them know about it. Really, really cool news, David. You made my day. Thank you. <laughs> now, David, uh, for a Giro, we're still pushing for more uh, volume during the weekend. So like uh, if liquidity has a... Uh, uh, five integrations pending on optimism because of the chaining feed. I think Angel, we, we've made the count the other day and there are at least 10 integrations which we would be able to uh, to unleash uh, with, with the chaining feed. Uh, I guess there are some security reasons because volume, uh, I understand that there are security reasons because volumes are, are too small. But uh, yeah, like uh, it's uh, it's our really our number one integration priority to secure this chaining feed uh, on mainnet. But not only, you know, like uh, on Optimism, there are many protocols willing to integrate a Giro. A Giro has gained a lot of momentum recently on Arbitrum as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's at least 10 different integrations. So it will help us uh, with, with the feed. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, as, as Bruce was saying, I mean, we don't move fast because we need to move slowly to make sure it's very secure. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking, Pablo. <laughs> Let's go. It's great. Thanks, uh, David. Fantastic news, I guess. Anyone else, if you have any questions, let's, let's, I can bring you up to stage or else we can wrap it up in a little bit as well. It's going to be hard to top this news, but don't be shy. We take questions too. <laughs> Probably the biggest alpha leak that <laughs> from David. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting this. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I think our audience is quite shy, so let's 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 wrap it up here. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pablo. Thanks, Brees, and thanks, David, for making our day as well. Um, this will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. Um, but yeah, every, everyone, thanks so much for joining, and have a great day. Thanks, uh, thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure, and uh, thanks for the invitation. And looking forward to exploring, uh, integrating more uh, the most uh, resilient uh, USD stable coins uh, on the Angle protocol. Amazing. Thanks you all for joining. See you in the next one. See you guys. Bye.